Hi, my name is Nisha Dasadarshan and I'm working in Siemens AG in Munich, Germany as a project manager and engineer for augmented reality applications. I'll be walking you through a presentation which shows the approach and results of an AR quality assurance demonstrator for industry use cases. This was done in the context of a government funded project. The presentation intends to exemplify a framework of features which are most commonly required in AR applications for industry use cases of inspection, maintenance, training or quality checks. So a pressing plant in Germany was looking to help their personnel to perform faster and efficient quality checks. Um, they needed to assess the quality of large press parts, for example a huge inner car door frame that you see here. Quality checks could be, for instance, to, to see if holes are punched correctly or if special markings are present at the right places and so on. So industry use cases have complex machine parts to be checked for correctness, repair or assembly. These tasks are mostly done by service technicians who use the help of paper manuals or fixed monitors with media type manuals, which help them complete the task. Um, these are mostly cumbersome and are prone to errors. Furthermore, the personnel need to remember where exactly to focus on and what needs to be checked. This can cause a lot of fatigue. Personnel inspecting the parts for anomalies take around 15 to 20 minutes per part. This whole process is error prone, especially when there are too many items to be checked in succession on large parts. When we started brainstorming about the approach for this POC, we had to keep the following considerations in mind. Along with bringing the benefits of an AR-assisted system, we also had to ensure that the device itself is not heavy and the technology works with gloves and is hands-free. Furthermore, the service technicians are digitally limited and we had to give them a very quick and intuitive UI to work with. All of these, of course, needed to be also digitally protocoled, thereby eliminating the need for paper manuals, a part of which, which you see on the right here in yellow. This application exposes a framework of features which can be easily customized and reused for other industry use cases. So what we did was to pack it with features that we most commonly see which are needed for industry use cases, uh, which, which need this kind of an AR-assisted guidance system. Um, this feature framework was built with Unity 3D and MRTK on the HoloLens 2 as an example HMD. But this should be compatible with other devices using the MRTK as well. Firstly, we had the alignment feature. This feature is necessary when the 3D model needs to be aligned or overlaid onto an existing physical object. Alignment is a common feature required when the overlaid 3D model, along with its pre-imposed instructions or annotations, are helping the service technician to focus on any place of interest. So manual alignment is already provided by MRTK, which involves pinching or grabbing the 3D model and manipulating its scale, rotation or position with hand gestures. The advantages of such an easy approach is that it's really a no-brainer for the technicians who, who are doing this and they would also need to check the back side of the model for punches or markings and can just grab and turn the 3D model for that and place it on the actual object. The biggest benefit we've seen with this simple manual alignment is that where off-the-shelf tracking or alignment algorithms fail because these are large shiny reflective uh, objects manual alignment does the trick. In terms of markers, the technicians do not want to go around scanning markers first to make the simple overlay. The markers would definitely come into play when they have complex scenarios of multiple parts to be aligned on a bigger machine or so. After the 3D model has been rightly aligned, we simply show these POIs or places of interest or points of interest uh, with the way of green arrows on the exact part of the pro object. These POIs could be hole punches or special markings which need to be checked for correctness, for example. At first, all of these are by default screen, indicating that everything is present. 
the quality check personnel go quickly through these POIs and simply touch an identifier, as you see in the video, which then changes to red circle of or marking it as <clears throat> with, the, with the cross on it, indicating that something is missing or faulty there. This way, everything is quickly protocoled by simple touch gesture. If something has been wrongly marked, then you just touch the red circle again to mark it as present. This enables the personnel to focus very quickly on checkpoints rather than remember or refer to external information. The app also provides for media shown directly at checkpoints, which facilitate reference-based checks. So the benefits to that are that there is no crowding of information and the context-based info can be accessed on demand. There also exists a need for protocoling media such as videos or photos. Um, these can be either used to record training material or inspect with the help of pre-recorded material. This could also be for the use case where the service technician needs to send a picture or a video of the faulty or missing part on the machine. So the protocoling of the results directly through the app communicating with the server. The added feature of user management allows for storing of protocols based on the user currently logged in. So this can then be revisited by the same or another user. The biggest advantage was that the inspection time reduced from 20 to 5 minutes and people knew exactly where to focus and what to check, all within the app. Since they could just use 5 minutes to check and protocol results simultaneously, more parts ended up being thoroughly analyzed for quality assurance. There were many challenges and lessons learned when we had to come up with this POC. Apart from convincing digitally limited workers and the general hesitation of being monitored, the personnel were encouraged to try this on their own and see if it actually made sense to them. Some other challenges were on the developer front to make this app accessible also across platforms because we don't only have people asking for HMDs, but also iPads or Android tablets. Therefore, we set up a base project in Unity and worked with the AR Foundation and MRTK interchangeably to make sure porting was relatively easy and quick. However, one of the key challenges we have is to determine the ROI of such apps in AR. What helps us is to have key metrics such as inspection time, number of parts checked in an R, and so on. The project has paved way for future research in AR applications to especially focus on automating the reading of data into the app, as well as creating and editing points of interest directly in the app. In terms of our app framework, we want to add the most requested feature of AR measurements and point cloud scan holograms. So these are especially useful in planning scenarios where production line managers or similar roles want to design a new line of workstation in a fast and efficient manner using AR. Furthermore, measurements which help them check fit and collision analysis, most of which nowadays is done using 2D software. For sure, in, in the field of uh, machine learning algorithms, we hope to also find solutions to the tracking problems, include training of neural networks to do anomaly detection automatically. In general, we are also in way to investigate rugged devices meant for such heavy dirt and high temperature environments and see how well they stand them. Last but clearly not the least, we want to make use of the fun factor which comes with AR to also help the worker get rid of their fatigue, maybe by introducing gamification within the app or so, or introducing some recreational timed pauses. This should help them with also the monotony of tasks that we see. Thank you for watching the presentation. We hope it has given you some valuable tips on designing apps in AR for industry use cases.